We've already covered multiple language families that exist within the vastness of Russia. As you've already learned, there are also Turkic and Uralic languages coexisting alongside the official language of the country. However, there are way, way more. Today, we'll cover yet another language family. Though it's not as present as the Turkic family, for example, it still exists. As you already know from the title of this video, I'm talking about the Mongolic languages. Without further ado, поехали! If you ever meet a speaker of this language without being familiar to the fact that Russia is home to over 120 ethnic groups, not every of which is European, by the way, you'll never believe what country this person originally comes from. As I already mentioned in other videos, there are two sorts of Russians existing in the Russian language. There are Russian, means these people are not necessarily Slavic, however, they are born in Russia and have a passport with a double-headed eagle on it. And there are Ruskia, well, the ethnic Russians who are East Slavic and so on and so forth. So, Burats are actually Rossiyani, or Russians of Asian descent. Their ancestors were incorporated into the nation during the colonization of Siberia in the 16th century. And to that day, they are still part of the Russian society. Buryat is a Mongolic language of the Central Mongolic group. In the Chinese sources, it is also known as the Bagru Burat language and in pre-1956 Soviet sources as the Burat Mongolian language. The reason for the naming divergence is simple. According to some researches, the language is a mere dialect of the Mongolian language. However, this opinion is not as common. The majority of Burat speakers live in Russia along the northern border of Mongolia. Needless to say, it is an official language of the Burat Republic. It is predominantly spoken by ethnic Burats, with over 72.3% of the Republic being the native speakers. Among others, there are also 16,000 non-Burat native speakers, predominantly Russians, living in the Burat Republic. Also, there are over 10,000 ethnic Burats living in Mongolia and Inner Mongolia, China. Burats in Russia have a separate literary standard based on the Cyrillic script. It is based on the Russian alphabet with three additional letters added to better represent the phonology of the language. The language can also be written in the traditional Mongolian alphabet as well as in the Latin script. However, neither of them can be official in Russia. The language has several dialectal groups. Also, excuse me for butchering several of the Mongolian names, I'm not really good at pronouncing such things. Quarry group, east of Lake Baikal, comprising Quarry, Aga, Tignui, and North Selenga dialects. Lower Ada dialect, which shows the strongest influence by the Turkic family. A large Tunka group spoken in the southwest of Lake Baikal in the case of Tunka also in Mongolia. A Karid Bulagat group in the Ust Orda National District. Bargut group in Hulun Buyur, known historically as Barga. This one is also sort of a surprise. It was a surprise even for me when I found out where this language is spoken and to which language family it belongs. Yeah, it is a Mongolic language, however, it is spoken in Europe, in the European part of Russia to be exact. The Kalmyk Republic, or Kalmykia for short, is a Russian Republic to the north of the North Caucasus mountain range in Eastern Europe. The Kalmyk people live in the vicinity of the Russian Caspian Sea. Despite that, they claim their descent from Oirats from Eurasia coming from Mongolia and northwest China. Kalmyk is now spoken by a very small minority of the Kalmyk population. Its decline began after the mass Kalmyk deportation in 1943. It took place as a punishment for the limited collaboration of Kalmyk people with the Nazis during World War II. Other significant factors for language decline include the deaths of a, of a substantial percentage of the Kalmyk population from disease and malnutrition, the widespread dispersal of the Kalmyk population, the duration of exile which ended in 1957, the stigma associated with being accused of treason, the assimilation into a larger, more dominant culture. The 2010 census stated that only 80,500 people could speak the language both natively and secondarily. I bet the current census held in 2021 will state even less Kalmyk speakers. The majority of Kalmyk speakers live in the Republic of Kalmykia where it is an official language. Small groups of Kalmyk speakers also live in France and in the United States. However, in these countries the actual number of speakers is hardly above 1,000 people. Due to all this, 
Kalmyk is regarded as an endangered language. As of 2012, the Kalmyk community in New Jersey, the United States, was planning to work with the Enduring Voices project to help promote the Kalmyk language and culture. Kalmyk is written with a Cyrillic script. It is an official requirement imposed by the Constitution of the Russian Federation in order to make a minority language official in a republic. The Cyrillic script was adopted in the early 20th century, however, the official transition began after the year 1930. The Latin script was also developed during the Latinization campaign of the early USSR in the 1920s. The alphabet was in use until 1938 when it was officially outlawed by Stalin. A fun fact. Since the Kalmyk and the Tatar alphabets are identical, as both languages use the same additional letters to represent sounds absent in the Russian language, Kalmyk people using the Windows operating system use the Tatar keyboard to type. Kalmyk specific keyboard layouts are also available for Linux and Android systems. Neither Kalmyk nor Tatar are available for Apple systems. These are not all the Mongolic languages spoken in Russia, however, all others do not have any official status in any of federal subjects of the country. There are other language families present in Russia, so stay tuned for the updates. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a nice day and пока!